better all the time. Hello and welcome again to another show featuring me, Hobo Tom. Yes, and it's WrestleMania season, folks. So it's going to be a lot of wrestle talk. Probably today, tomorrow. Wow, every day about Wednesday. Actually, probably by the time this comes up, probably will be Wednesday. It's WrestleMania season. Gargano Ichiampa. DIY. No one's going to do it for you. Yes, yes. Probably can't see that because I've actually switched chairs. I think my old chairs got a little too squishy and soft. So I had to switch chairs. Eventually, I have to get a new one. Replace it. That's okay. Because I'm going to hope I'll just find one. Someone leaves on the street. But I'm not here to talk about my, my chair situation. Well, that is kind of important. I'm here to talk about Monday Night Raw. And this was, for the most part, one of the better go home shows I've seen in a while. We'll see what happens on Thursday. Because I know I will bring in special guest Dr. Keller, Dr. Tom. Because there's a lot of screwy stuff. And I think we're going to have dueling predictions. Because there's people who I want to win. But the math might not necessarily agree with me. Although in some cases, the math is really screwy. So let's get to the show. Enough talk from me. It starts off with a stuff promo. Aha. It's April Fool's. And Steph said that the women aren't going to be going to main event. Ha ha, April Fools. <laughs> Hooey to you. Again, she just kind of announces the main event WrestleMania is going to be the women's three-way uh, winner-take-all match. I've heard some rumors and innuendo about how that's going to work. Um, whoever pins whoever, I guess with the exception of Becky, wins their belt. So if Charlotte pins Ronda, she gets Ronda's belt, and she's going to hold both belts. Ronda pins Charlotte. Ronda gets both belts. Ronda pins Becky. She keeps her belt. Charlotte pins Becky. She keeps her belt. Whoever Becky pins... She wins their belt. It's convoluted. Don't blame me. They should just have titles on a pole match. Or do an elimination where the person who picks up the first pinfall gets the raw belt and the person who ever wins the second match Get SmackDown belt unless the raw person wins, and then they get both belts. That still makes sense, at least more sense than this. So it's okay. It is what it is. My fear is it's going to be a real slog of a WrestleMania, though. I think it starts for me at six, and it's slated for seven hours. That means it'll end, I think, at 1 a.m. Sounds brutal. But we'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I guess I can do a short hobo. A little short hobo run. But back to the action, though. Then we have a... Brock promo, Brock Lesnar promo, and of course Paul Heyman's there. Seth comes out. Again, Seth starts to take a beating from Brock. He low blows Brock Lesnar. And for good or for bad, Seth stands tall at the end of the segment. Next match, there was an eight-woman tag match, and they do this all the time. But this was actually somewhat entertaining, though. It sets the stage for what's going to probably happen in WrestleMania. I have a bad feeling that this WrestleMania is going to be very predictable. But we'll see what happens. I don't even think they have all the matches set yet. That's why I'm going to wait until Thursday 
Nightish to do my prediction and Dr. Tom's predictions as well. Will probably be Thursday ish. Then those will go up because then Friday is going to be NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Saturday is the Super Card of Honor. And then Sunday is WrestleMania. And then I should have a. Oh, man, I have a lot. Oh, wait, the third. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of wrestling I have to cover. Wow. I need a date for some of these. We'll see what happens. Then um, we have the eight woman tag match. It was the Boston Hug Connection, Sasha Banks and Bailey uh, team with Natalia and Beth Phoenix. And they take on the Iconics and Nia Jax and Tamina. Um, to begin the match, Beth Phoenix wants to start. Sasha Banks says, and eh, eh, tags herself in. In that kind of blind, semi heelish tag. And she, um, and Banks and Kate and Royce actually start off the match. And Sasha Banks is not that good of a wrestler. She has a cute little bubble butt. Yeah, a little bubble butt. Bubble butt. <laughs> bubble butt sounds funny. But when it comes to what she does in the ring, not so great. You tell she botched up twice, like the first time wasn't enough. She goes up, climbs, climbs up the ropes, and drops, and does like a tomahawk chop to the person's arm. You've all seen that. You have the arm, you go up the rope, someone comes out, oh, my arm. Because they did it from the top row. Makes it significant. Oh no, this was a Mexican arm drag from the top rope. That's right. She didn't get that down though. <laughs> I got I do have to give props to Peyton Royce for being a pro and at least selling. If that's what I guess you could call it. And then Sasha Banks made the ultimate mistake and try it a second time. And it looked even worse. Sasha Banks. Don't do that stuff. Don't do flippy stuff. Don't do anything that involves rope walking. Or going over said top rope. Or even between the ropes. Please for your own good. Because eventually it's going to end badly. I think that's how she actually hurt her neck. She... Um, and versus Char Charlotte Flair. And she doesn't weigh that much either because she can't go through tables. <laughs> the table no sells Sasha Banks. It's terrible. At least I go through a table fairly easy, I would think. Um, but for the most part, the Boston Hug connection, leaving Natalia and Beth Phoenix out of the match. Again, as a tag team, they're actually pretty good. Minus Sasha Banks' botchiness. Eventually, Peyton Royce does make the tag to Billy Kay. She comes in. Again, when the Iconics do their double team, they actually act like they've been a tag team forever. I know they're both Australian. Oh, I always love it. Whenever there's a, there's, there's a two count, both Peyton Royce and Billy Kay say the same thing. And, and the fact that there's a ref, you have to get the quick count. You have to. You have to count faster. What they should say is you have to count in Australian. Or when there's the, the, the five count, the five count to, to break something. They say, no, you have to say in Australian. I don't say, I don't uh, comprehend what you're saying. And I cannot do an Aussie accent unless I'm a crocodile hunter. Croc crikey. That's a monster. Croc. Hi, hi, Jimmy and Joseph. I'm gonna grab his tail and aggravate it. Cause I'm the crocodile hunter. Oh, crikey! <laughs> Australians are cool. Again, the bushwhackers. Australians are cool. 
So again, the Iconic Star also get the tag team. Um, eventually, Peyton Royce gets caught up, and or or uh, Billy Kay, I think, so in the corner. No, I have it backwards. I think Peyton Royce was in the corner. Billy Kay pulls her out of the way. So Bailey goes crashing into said turnbuckle. And then Peyton Royce has the cutest butt wiggle to get tagged in the match. Because the thing was that Nia Jackson and Tamina wanted nothing to do with this match. They just wanted everyone to beat up everyone. Makes sense. If you're going to win, you might as well have all three teams beat each other up. Eventually, Beth Phoenix does get... does. Um, Natalia does tag in. I think she shoves Sasha Banks to the side. So, Bailey tags in Natalia, I think. She works over Billy Kay. And then, of course, Natalia is smart. So now, my partner in the ring. And she tags in Beth, Beth Phoenix. And again, Beth Phoenix is she's she's a, a very good looking, very strong woman though. Hey. All I can say is that she still looks like a woman. And she has that nice soft little like tummy instead of having a six pack, so Beth Phoenix is still pretty cute. Although she is married to Christian though, I think. Christian, yeah. Um eventually goes to the outside. Beth Phoenix gets her son of Tamina and puts her through the barricade for the um, where where the bell ringer and ring announcer sit. That was pretty impressive. Um, eventually, Billy um, no Peyton Royce beats the Glam Bomb, I think, and. The team of Sasha Banks, Bailey, Talia, and Beth Phoenix win. However, the important thing to note here is that Natalia and Beth Phoenix stand tall. And Sasha Banks and Bailey just kind of take their tag team titles and raise them. So that leads to ponder what's going to happen for WrestleMania. Again, we'll get to that Thursday. I have to compile all my notes. And I guess Dr. Tom will, will give us some math. So we'll see what happens. Um, then we have... So that was a cheeseburger match. And my qualm, Sasha Banks, to me, was never that great a wrestler. Every so often, her deficiencies show up. Then we have a Batista recap. All he says at the end, Hunter, kiss me. Oh, wait, did I self-beat myself? Wow. I need a new mic. I'm, I'm self-editing myself. Hello. 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 Okay. There we go. I'm Elias has a promo. Oh, walk with Elias. Oh, walk with Elias. Again, you can do the Seven Nation Army theme to almost anything. Oh, ho, Bo Tom. Oh, ho, Bo Tom. So, again, that was fun. Um, what else was there? Oh, then there was like a weird lumberjack match, but none of the lumberjacks got involved, which kind of didn't make it fun. When you have a lumberjack match, you want to see the lumberjacks try to get involved. For that reason, I shall give it that rating. But you had Jinder Mahal versus Apollo Crews. It was kind of it was it was a decent match. Uh, it was short though for a lumberjack match. Um, Jinder's obviously the stronger, the more brutish heel. Um, Apollo Cruz, hey, he's just athletic. He can do almost anything in the ring. Um, maybe not quite the speed of Ricochet or Leo Rush, but he definitely has some of their move sets. I mean, he does do the standing moonsault. I don't know how comfortable he is on the top rope though. 
So maybe not. But again, he's again, you can do a standing moonsault. That's pretty impressive. You can gorilla press people. Again, that's pretty impressive. Um, it was a good match. Uh, Jinder started off with the upper hand. Eventually, Apollo Crews did make his comeback. And he beat Jinder Mahal 1, 2, 3 in the ring. And the weird thing is, with all the lumberjacks around who are in the Battle Royal, first, there's a lot of tag teams. Tag teams never win Battle Royals or Royal Rumbles. Jessica has the Usos. They, eliminate, they almost eliminated each other once. That was a funny moment. That was a... That was a <laughs> bro. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're going to have some fun in this match since we're stuck here. Um, EC3 just looks bored. It's just like there. Very, like... Stoic. Being right into the camera. He seems so disinterested. So disinterested. It's... it's Almost not even funny. Um, match itself, though. I mean, if you have a lumberjack match, you have to throw one guy out of the ring to get the lumberjacks. If not, well, I have him. Oh, Tyler Breeze was done too. So this really is a can of soup match. Oh, I forgot. I need to do a bunch of stuff, too. Shoot. Supposed to do that today. But that's okay. That's neither here nor there. Eventually, Apollo Crews poses with a with a trophy. And then the B-Squad gets in the ring. And then the Acolytes get in the ring. And then the whole big schmoz happens. Apollo Crews stands tall, though. He clears out. He's the last man in the ring. I don't know. We'll see. Then we have a Kurt Angle promo. Again, he's interrupted by Baron Corbin. The Rey Mysterio comes out and says, you know what? I'll fight him. That was pretty good. And then, again, this is getting old a little bit. But because of the way it ended and because of what it sets up for WrestleMania, so that was actually pretty fun. It was uh, Ricochet and Alistair Black versus the Revival. And I'll tell you what, Ricochet is so smooth in the ring. Revival is just a really fun throwback. And when I say throwback, I'm not talking about the, 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 the 2000s. I'm not talking about the 2000 teens, 2000s, 1990s. I'm going old school. With a fabulous voice, the Moon Dogs, Bill Dundee. What did I see? Uh, Mad Dog Vachon. What else was there? The Fabulous Boys, Midnight Express, Jim Cornette, the Road Warriors, Macho Man and Jerry Lawler in a steel cage, Steel Cage, Dirty Dick Murdoch. Versus Jerry Lawler in a bullwhip match. Was it or was it Dundee versus? Maybe it was maybe it was uh, Bill Dundee versus Dirty Dick Murdoch in a bullwhip match. Those are going back. These this was Michael PSAs before he was Freebird. Michael PSAs, the Von Ericks. That's who the revival remind me of. Actually, the revival reminded me of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. That's neither here nor there. They're just good. Again, that's why I like them. Again, the, the very classic tag team work, um, classic tag team tactics, quick tags, in and out, uh, double teams whenever they can, double uh, dis go distract the referee, I'll choke him or something. It was really good. Um, Ricochet takes kind of, he starts off, takes the brunt of it. Eventually, Oscar Black gets in. Alistair Black's a great striker, but you know what? The, the Revival's not too bad at striking themselves. Remember, all fists, no flips. Or just, fl just fists, no flip. 
But again, Ricochet. Ricochet is so quick. Again, I think the only person quicker than Ricochet is really Leo Rush. I mean, everyone else looks just slow to, compared to him. Again, good tactics. Bible's smart. They, they start to manipulate the ring. Ricochet can fly them. Alistair Black it out to the outside. Both the Revival are out to the outside. Ricochet literally jumps over the top turnbuckle. Not even the top rope. Top turnbuckle. Over the corner ring post. And lands on the Revival. Um, he does get tied up in the ring. Which means the Revival win by a countout. Not a dusty finish, but a proper countout. So you know what? Because they're setting this up for WrestleMania, the Revival won, but still kind of by dastardly means, but not necessarily blatant cheating or cowardly means, I will give this match a surf and turf rating. But the only problem here and that is as the revival was celebrating, Alistair Black and Ricochet wound up standing tall. They took out the revival. Um, eventually, Ricochet did hit the 630. They stand tall. But we'll definitely see what happens for WrestleMania. So then we get. And I thought they were going to give this a longer time, mainly because of where they put it. But, well, actually, they have a Charlotte promo. Charlotte's so funny. And the Snickers, Snickers commercial WWE is doing is pure gold. They had Miz TV. Miz had the soundboard. What does, what does Charlotte say? He presses a button. Woo! Just shows, like, all Charlotte pros and every so often there's a Ric Flair. Woo! It's only a Ric Flair could do a proper. Woo! Um, again, the, the Charlotte promo was pretty good. Again, saying, yeah, well, we'll wait till after, after the match and see what happens. So again, we have the next match, the Riot Squad versus Becky, Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair, and Ronda Rousey. Uh, Charlotte and Ruby Wright. And I feel so bad for Ruby Riot, even though every so often she gets her offense in. She's always at the short end. Um, eventually, Becky tags herself in. She gets her shots at Ruby Riot. Um, Ruby Riot tags in Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan weighs her down. I like the fact that they gave Sarah Logan that modified, that kind of standing gorilla lock. I think if she fell down to her back and locked her legs, that, that's the chest of true gorilla lock, which is amazing looking. And if, if I had any submission finisher besides the hobo choke, the, the, the hobo lock would be, would be my or finishing submission. I'm trying to think. Can't do that though. Cause, all right. What is my signature? The pile driver signature. The finisher is just a headbutt to the groin. Again, you have to think of Hobo's fight. My head's your groin, my head's winning. Um, eventually, Becky Lynch, again, again, she gets back. Liv Morgan tags in. Ronda Rousey tags herself in. You know what happens next. Liv Morgan's going to tap. But the match is over. <laughs> then round, so the match is over. It was a fun enough match. You knew what was going to happen. You, you knew what was going to happen the whole time. The match itself is a ham sandwich. What happens afterwards is amazing because... As soon as the match is over, Ronda Rousey gets her hand raised. Charles, ooh, yeah, until Ronda Rousey cold cocks her. And then Becky wants, wants in on the action. She she goes after Ronda Rousey, knocks her down. 
Charlotte goes after Becky. It's like a Benny Hill fight scene. Very good stuff. And the cops come out. Why are there cops not security? And Rhonda, you can't hit cops. They send you to real jail in real cop cars. But eventually, again, the cops try and break up everything. Uh, Rhonda accidentally knocks a cop down. Never do that. But, oh, they were in Washington, D.C. If they were in Philadelphia, they would chant, Taze her. Taze her. Oh, the Philadelphia crowd would just would be like, Taze her. Taze her. Pepper spray. Pepper spray. Mace. 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 Or whatever else the cops use that's non lethal. You don't want to shoot Ronda Rousey. That's, that's not good. But um, they put Ronda Rousey in cuffs <laughs> and Becky Lynch <laughs> just cold cocks or cheap shots her while she's in the cuffs. Becky Lynch gets put into cuffs. Charlotte realizes that Becky and Ronda's in cuffs. Charlotte punches Becky, who's in cuffs. So Charlotte gets put in cuffs. All three women are put in cuffs. And then as they're being led to the back, they're like trying to kick in each other. Cops are pretty stupid, though. They put two of the combatants in the same car. That's 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 dumb. Because then Rhonda and Becky are in the same car, and they're just kicking each other, and then eventually kick out the glass. Um, they separate two of them, put them in separate cars. Finally. Uh, Rhonda sticks her head out the window. Shonda, Charlotte knees Rhonda in the head. <laughs> Their head out the window. They put Charlotte. They, Charlotte's the only one not in the cop car. Wait a second. How did that happen? But yeah. So so that was entertaining in itself. Again, it was Becky Lynch besides on Charlotte. That cheap shot on Ronda Rousey is probably one of the best cheap shot ever. I have to make that, that best moment part two. I have to think about how I'm going to And I have to make a new gift. I have to make a dirty pen gift. Shoot. And then the next match, you have Heavy Machinery takes on Gable and Rude. It was a fun, it was a fun enough match. Listen, I'm a heavy machinery mark. Any match heavy machinery is, is in in which they're winning and they look strong at is going to get, it's going to put a smile on my face. Made me feel better after the kind of, oh, I had a, I had a fairly good day. But this made me feel better. Um, Rude was, was actually just beginning to get the advantage when. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, uh, I don't even know what her music is, but Lacey Evans shows up. There's some rumors out there that Lacey Evans hasn't mastered some of the basics yet. Lacey Evans should have never been called up to the main roster. They are not doing her any favors. They're giving her the Melina times Eva Marie treatment. Neither of which are still in WWE. Not a good sign. Again, the match was fun. Again, Rude gets distracted by Lacey Evans. Eventually, Heavy Machinery makes her comeback on Gable. And they win with the Compactor. Listen, it was a fun match. Lacey Evans does take away from it, though. This is... I hate to do this to heavy machinery, but this is a ham sandwich match. In the next match, it was Braun versus two jobbers. This was a fun squash match. They haven't had a, a, a two-on-one squash match in a while, so this was actually pretty good. Um, Braun said this guy is him. From Saturday Night Live, this guy is him. 
he all he does is throw them around, throw them outside the ring, run around. He, he looks like he's content to get the count out win. Not happening. Does this little running shoulder tackle to each of them outside the ring? One more time. One more time. One more time. One more time. <laughs> so again, he goes around a second time, knocks them both in, throws them both in the ring, stacks them in the corner, gives them the big splash. It's fun. Short matches like this are easy to call. Uh, picks up both, puts both of them, and I think he power slams both of them. Gets up. Not done. Puts them both on his shoulders. Both. It's a double running power slam. He, of course, gets the pin. This was fun. I haven't seen this in a while. They need to do this every so often just to remind us that Braun is the monster among men. And again, it was fun. It put a smile on my face. You know what? It's 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 a it's a it's a squash match. So, but it's still a ham sandwich. And the main event of the evening was Baron Corbin versus Rey Mysterio Jr. Rey's tiny looking in comparison to Baron Corbin. Ray's quicker. Corbin's no slouch, though. Um, Corbin's very heavy-fisted. Definitely the more powerful of the two. Um, Ray is definitely the more agile, more reliant on his quickness. Baron did that, that, that heel tactic, trying to rip off Ray's mask. Shame on you, Baron Corbin. Shame, shame, shame. Only Rudos do that. True Rudos. You're no true Rudo. You're some heel. So, again, he tried to do it that, and of course he gets booed. Uh, Corbin just, after a while, just manhandles Rey Mysterio. Rey does get, again, his, his offense. He does the um, spinning, twisty, twirl DDT, um, the 619, Hurricanrana. But with so Baron Corbin hit a deep six on Rey Mysterio after he just like threw him outside the ring. That looked great. Um, Baron Corbin won with a deep six. He won with a signature, not a finisher. Again, probably... They <sighs> shouldn't have lost that way. But again, because of the size difference, though, it makes sense. This was a really fun cheeseburger match. And again, it closes the show showing Charlotte in a police car. I guess they finally figured out what to do with the other two. They're, they're gone. And overall, it was actually a really fun go-home show. I think the only low point really was the Lumberjack match that didn't involve the Lumberjacks that much. And, 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 Sa and Sa Sa Sasha Botch. So, all of that, it was actually a really good, fun go home show. It'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow on SmackDown. And that was Raw. And just a little programming note tomorrow is going to be SmackDown. So, again, I'm kind of the, the day behind because this, well, this is going to be going up tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, um, Smack, Wednesday morning, Wednesday night. SmackDown goes up. Thursday is going to be prediction day because, again, I still have to figure out what matches are where. And it's going to be a triple feature prediction. Three. And then Friday, it's either, depending on my work schedule, it's either going to be a live or r, &R, &R show of NXT TakeOver. Or, or just a strip review. Saturday is going to be again either a live stream or R and R show of the Super Card of Honor. Or if I'm working, how am I going to do that? Or if I'm working, it'll be a reaction show. The same is true on Sunday, where it's either going to be an R. 
are on our show. I'm more than likely it'll be a live stream with that's a truncated version only because it all depends when I work and or when I get out of work. And then it'll be Monday, Raw, Tuesday, SmackDown. Maybe Saturday again, depending on my work schedule. Might get another NXT show in. They're coming back to Sanford right after WrestleMania, so that'll be weird. Again, if you like to see any of any NXT, what happens at NXT shows here on the Florida House Record, you can check out some of my previous videos. I just put one up last week about when NXT came to Daytona. It was a British invasion. The British are coming. The British were coming. And everyone have a good night. Thanks for watching. Bye.